I hope you all enjoyed the film. I'm sure you did. I know you did. I heard that you did. Um, my name's Nick Duncalf. I am a film critic, which is part of the reason why I'm here, to help host this Q&A. But I've also been friends with Marcus for a long time. Just really gratifying to be here with him to celebrate what he's achieved. This is Marcus. Marcus Marcoux, the writer, director, producer, distributor, flyer, hander-outer. <laughs> Basically, the guy who made Pop It Up So if there are any cast and crew here, um, I know that um, Tommy is here, Tommy Underhill. Uh, George Corafas is here as well. <laughs> Michael Spar, Kiros. And in fact, Lackey is here. Cosima is here, who plays Sophie in the movie so brilliantly. George Savidis, who plays Mechmet so elegantly in the film. Sarah Butler, the so producer, is here. Sarah Butler with the blonde hair Sarah is the producer. Is the editor. Come on down and then sit at the front. First of all, um, I know that a lot of you here will be of Greek descent or Greek Cypriot descent, and I know that. For Marcus, that was probably a big part of making this story. Marcus was a very successful businessman before he made this film, and this is his first film. So, in a way, there's a bit of Harry in you. How important was it that this was a story about Greeks? Um, well, the, the reason that I, uh, I tried to write this story was, in a way, to do what Harry ends up doing in the film, which was trying to get back in contact with some of my own lost roots. I started off life uh, as a, in a very tightly knit Greek Cypriot community in Birmingham. My first language was Greek. And when I went to prep school, they said to my parents, you sh got to stop the Greek. And I became a little Englishman playing cricket and rugby. Uh, which was completely bemusing to my Cypriot family in Cyprus, where they'd come and watch me play rugby, and they had no idea what was going on. So, in a way, the, the genesis of the story was me trying to reach back to something. I wanted to write a story that challenged my own values about materialism and success. What is it, really? Um, so those two things combined in the writing process uh, very early on. And of course, I'm not thinking about directing it. I'm not thinking about financing it. I'm just thinking as a writer what, what one's aim is as a writer. And there's a very, and I know there's a few filmmakers in here and writers in here. There's a brilliant <laughs> book by John Truby, who's a Hollywood script doctor. And his advice at the very beginning of his book is write a story that could change your life because if you don't sell the script and the film is never made, at least you've got some kind of exploration of you. So that, I guess that was the genesis of the, of the writing process. Now what's really apparent, just from seeing the people that are up here today and the warmth that everybody on this cast and crew have for each other, which is unlike anything I've ever seen, it can be very tense, people often say, on the set of a film, and there can be arguments. Everybody here seems to get on so well. How important was it for you that this was a film about family? Um, uh, completely that. I mean, we, Sarah Butler, who is at the end there, produced it, um, and I worked together to make sure we created the best sense of spirit on the set. Uh, Anna Brabins next to Sarah is the first assistant director. Uh, I think they've known each other for many years. Sarah had worked with Seb, who was the editor. Um, and then in, in terms of casting it, we went, we made sure we just got good people, nice people, uh, friendly people. That was the most important thing that Sarah and I always tried to focus on is, let's just get good people that care. and we won't need to worry about paying them too much. <laughs> um, so, um, but there could be royalties. So, um, so that was really the, the spirit of how we brought this together. And Stephen Delane, who plays Harry Papadopoulos, 
or brought, works with his son, Frank Delane, who plays James Papadopoulos. And I guess having Stephen and Frank as father and son, playing father and son, created a, a, that sense of spirit. And then you've got George Corifas, who is one of the nicest people you will ever meet. Uh, he really is. And so what you've got, you've got a father and son playing father and son. You've got this wonderful, warm, kind man uh, in, in George. So you've got your big, big, big kind of players in the kind of set, in the kind of sort of game plan, are bringing to it positivity. Um, so that all helps. You know, and it, it stood us in great stead on day two of shooting, day two, when we had the London riots. I really thought we'd lost it all because there was no guarantee that the film was going to carry on shooting. And we weren't a big studio with deep pockets. And Stephen Delane had to go on to Game of Thrones. There was no time. And I thought, if we lose three, four days of shooting, this is game over. And, uh, but thankfully, there is no J, JB Sports or a Dixon's in Morden. So for some bizarre reason, we were the one place in London that didn't get so badly affected. I drove back at midnight to make sure that fish and chip shop hadn't burned down. Uh, and we were all right, just, but it was a real, it brought, actually brought us together as a cast and crew. Strangely, that event brought us together. It brought us close. We were all mucking in. Um, and that shines actually in the spirit of the film. You know, that you can't buy that. You cannot, it doesn't matter how many millions you've got to make your film, you cannot buy that collectivity, that unity. Can we talk about the chip shop? Because it's a, be it's a beautiful chip shop. Is well, it a real chip shop? S Sarah can answer this because it was her genius that, 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 that gave us, together working with the art director and the location manager, on a very, very tight budget, Sarah had to come up with some miraculous plan, so maybe she can answer the chip shop question. Um, so we obviously were a very low budget production, didn't have the money to close down a fish and chip shop for five weeks over the summer. Um, so we found this street in Morden, which by some miraculous um, thing had two empty shops opposite each other that we were able to hire for about three months, I think it was in total for a fraction of what you would pay a location fee for one day to film. Um, and if you're putting all of your money, if you're saving money rather in locations, then it frees up the money in the art department. So our designer, Julian, was filled with horror when I took him to these two empty shops and told him what bud budget he had to create a 1970s looking chip shop. Um, but he managed to do it. and. And we basically built it exactly as you see it in the film. So the living quarters behind were actually in that same space and he created everything from scratch. Exactly, exactly right. I mean, if you had to create that scene on a studio lot, it would be millions and millions. So, and because it was a working street, you've got that sense of reality. London buses going past, real people cycling past, you know. Uh, so it was brilliant to see how Sarah managed the budget and how when uh, making the location manager and the art director work together hand in hand. Again, it all comes down to a team effort. There was, there was no politics, you know. I, I wanted no politics. I've run a business with my brother for many years and it's politics that kills creativity. It becomes about something else, not about what you're trying to do. Who would like to speak to me about what it's like working for Marcus Marcu? And specifically, what, I'm, think, what I'm thinking of is um, what's it like writing, uh, working for somebody, not only has he written it, not only is he telling you how to say every line, but I, I don't know, maybe he doesn't do that, I don't know, um, but um, when it's his money. Is it an ex it, 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 what, what's it like when he's basically the big boss of everything? Uh, well, it was, it was really pleasurable really pleasurable from the start from reading the script the script was alive it was it was funny it was touching the characters were there there was there was only to to feed them and they would grow you know unexpected branches and and they would give their fruit so you know he was nurturing us all 
very well because he is a man of theater. He's studied theater. He's not just a businessman. He, you know, he's also a businessman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's studied theater. He's written plays. He practices still to the day, uh, uh, once a week, improv theater. Not recently. Not recently. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been, he's been taking the improv into, into the, the social medias. Yes. yes. Correct. <laughs> And um, it, it's 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 a, it's a pleasure to work with with Marcus. Uh, I think everyone agrees. Uh, uh I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to add to that. That I mean, even just going to the casting was an amazing process because you were so. I don't think I've ever been to a casting where someone was so excited. You were just so supportive and, and positive. It was a real pleasure, and you rarely get that as an actor, that you, you go in and someone's just like, yeah, yeah, do it again, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Anybody surprised that Cosmo is actually English? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the way that you have distributed this film. Now, actually, distributing a film is normally a fairly dry topic, but the reason that I want to mention this is that this is a very unusual film, in that basically, you, not, not only have you written it and put directed and produced, et cetera, et cetera, all the things we've heard about already, but the reason that it's actually in this cinema is because you got it into this cinema. And the reason that most of the people are here today is not because they've seen a poster on a bus, it's not because they've seen an advert on the television, for a lot of them, it's because they've actually had a personal interaction with you, which is really unusual. So can you talk a little bit about how that came to be? Well, what I, the positive effects of that have been? Yeah, I mean, I, I genuinely thought we'd make this film and it would be bought. Uh, again, maybe quite naively. Uh, and a very initial response was complete rejection from every single British distributor. Uh, on the basis that this film was not remotely commercial, uh, which genuinely surprised me because I thought it was very commercial. Um, and so you have to try new things. I thought, well, m obviously I was found that very difficult to come to terms to with, but once I did, I started looking at other avenues, looking at the internet, looking at... Uh, um, what what could be done um, and I was very fortunate to meet a brilliant sales agent called Maura Ford who genuinely loved the film and convinced me that we could take this film to Cannes which we did and I just thought this film would never sell given so much negativity and a Greek distributor bought it, a German distributor bought it, and it's having its release in Germany, of all places, with a banking crisis, and Greeks, and, uh, and, then, and then, but we still couldn't get a UK distributor. Um, and so another uh, opportunity arose by doing it direct into the, into the cinemas here, which is what we've, we've done, and then it becomes marketing. Film distribution is essentially marketing. So what I did was, they call it guerrilla marketing, but truly I think it's smart marketing. I built a very specific campaign to target the Greek and Greek Cypriot communities first, because I believed many of them, with a title like Papadopoulos, would just come. Is, is it true, incidentally, that people suggested to you that you should change the title of the film? Yeah. No, no, not just you, sir. <laughs> no, and I understand that, but there was there were some distributors that said they wouldn't touch a film with the word Papadopoulos in it. And that actually made me even more determined to keep it in. And, uh, and I am now getting emails from around the world from people thanking me for making Papadopoulos cool. <laughs> because it is often... The joke name. In EastEnders, there's a Papadopoulos. It's, I think Mrs. Slocum in Are You Being Served had a Papadopoulos boyfriend that nev we never saw. They're off, it's kind of the butt end of jokes. It's a, it's a kind of joke name. And I wanted to turn it not into a joke name. And I thought, I'm going to stick to that. I'm going to keep the title. And, uh, and I think it's, it has paid off because people, Greek people straight away think... Whether this film is good or not, I'm going to go see it.